G'day and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to make small electrical appliances. So originally it was all going to be just about this ghetto blaster because you know it's cool and I love it <coughs> and I had one just like it when I was a kid but I decided look you know the techniques transfer very very easily to all these other things so big old clunky 90s TV little 70s transistor radio Whoa. um... you know, VCRs stereos flat screen TVs you name it they're all easy to do so let's get stuck in and I'll show you how I made them so concentrating mostly on this but yeah this overall view shows you how easy it is to make anything this size Let's do it. So, um, today I'm going to show you how to scratch build a radio or a ghetto blaster. In my case, because I'm a child of the 80s, I'm going to do something funky like that. Woo! This is a Toshiba ghetto blaster. How cool is that? So, <clears throat> um, the building that I'm currently building is a radio and TV repair store. So, I've started, you know, it's got lots of electronic goods inside it, so I've done a little box for a flat screen TV, I've got a couple of others that I'm working on that I've just put together, we'll see how they turn out, but aside from boxes I also want some stuff that's actual you know, electronic goods, so I'm going to make a ghetto blaster. Um, just have some styrene here, I don't even know what thickness it is, maybe one millimeter, pretty standard. I've cut a couple of pieces to size, so that's going to be the length of the boom box, that's going to be the depth. And I just need to cut a couple more of those pieces the same size. There's nothing truly groundbreaking here. I'll, I'll warn you of that up front. Just using the first piece as a template to cut my next piece. I'm quite sure you all know how to cut styrene, but if you don't, I'll show you. That's all we need. Snaps off. Done. I'm going to do the other piece and come back. I have my four pieces. A couple of them might need a little bit of cleanup. When you snap them, it tends to just give you these little burrs right on the end there. I hope you can see that. In the focus. Yeah, can you see that little burr? Oh, come on. God. Right, you can see that little burr on the end there. You get what I'm talking about. So we're just going to get rid of that. Cool. Um, now it's just a matter of making a cylinder with these. <clears throat> I think I'll do it that way. So you can choose, let's focus again. You can choose whether to do it that way or that way. So you know, butt it up there or on there. It's much of a muchness really, to be honest. Not a huge difference. Actually, I'm going to go that. Slightly less tall. I'm going to use my Tamiya Extra Thin. It's good stuff. I rate it. I use it all the time. Capillary action will draw that in. Check that it's actually flush at the bottom here, on the other side. Because the one thing you don't want is a wonky ghetto blaster. Nothing worse in life. There we go. So the beauty of to be extra thin is that um, <clears throat> you've got a little bit of working time before it dries rock hard. Rock hard. <laughs> Can you see anything? Probably not. My hand's right in the way. Sorry, guys. It's not rocket science at this stage, really. None of this is rocket science, to be honest. Um, this whole process, so scratch building, I love scratch building. It's, it's so much more satisfying than building something straight out of a kit. Don't get me wrong, like, straight out of a kit is challenging. It's really challenging, and well-made straight out of a kit is a thing of beauty. You know, I'm not slagging off kits. Um, you know, people do stuff with kits that I could never, ever hope to, to, to achieve. 
But um, scratch building to me is just so much more satisfying, just to me, because I like building things that actually have meaning to me. Um, yeah, cool, that lines up. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. You know, I've built kits for many, 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 many years, and it's how I've learnt my craft, it's how I've learnt you know, all the skills that I use for scratch building, but, yeah, it just doesn't quite float my boat as much as it used to, and, um, you know, while I'm saying that, I have a massive stash of unbuilt kits still, I've got a lot of kits, I'll go, oh, that's going to be so cool to build, but, um, yeah, at this point in my life, this is what I'm enjoying. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm going to turn this over and try and line up those sides because you can see. I hope you can see. I'll just zoom in a bit. You can see where it's not. Wow, oh, come on. Struggling for focus. You can see it's not quite lining up down the bottom there. Oh, you can see. <laughs> the focus is not working. Ay, ay, ay. So. Just try and push it out a little. Same on this end. That's feeling better. Yeah, it's okay. And on the other side, it's a bit pokey out, so... I don't know, there's no hard and fast rules on how to do this. Flatten it with a ruler. That feels pretty good. Except for that massive gap right there. Look at that. That's huge. Okay. And, you know, I'm the first to admit, my uh, my measuring is not always the most precise. You saw how quickly I cut this. Quite often, if I try and get a box, it doesn't line up. <laughs> you know, it can be at this scale. This is roughly 1 20th. And at this scale, you know, if you're half a millimetre off, it shows, unfortunately. <coughs> Excuse me, just coming down with a cold. It's winter here in Australia. Yeah, so you can see there, it's not quite a perfect square, but I think we'll get away with it. Don't tell anyone. Right, I'm going to let that glue dry. Put a little bit more on the seams, actually, just to reinforce them. Gonna let the glue dry and then I'm gonna cut some pieces to be end caps. Right, so we now have our basic rectangular box ready to go. Um, so now for the fun part, now to detail it. That's your basic structure. So I want to have really cool round speakers at either end. Um, <clears throat> you know, as, as you go when you scratch build, you collect bits and bobs and you find stuff and you put it away in boxes and you get a bit hoarder to be honest, if I'm being completely honest. You tend to be a bit of a magpie and just pick up stuff wherever you go. But it's great because then when you need something, like I need two little round circles, you know, I've got these sort of tubes, yeah, I've got heaps of tubes um, floating around, just randomly plastic tubes. Um, these two are about the right dimensions. I cut two off the clear plastic one. I hope you can see those, it's clear plastic on white, it's not the best. No, you can't see them at all. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, there's those two, and they would be fine, but they're a little bit small. Otherwise, I've got these two O-rings that I think are a little bit better. So they are rubber. They will degrade over time. I'm, I'm putting it out there. I know that. Um, you know, I've got some kits that have rubber tyres from back in the 80s. And the rubber is as good today as it ever was. And I've got some kits from back in the 80s that, you know, the wheels started falling apart the moment you touch them. So I've had these rubber O-rings. I've got like a little pack of them I got for like five bucks at a hardware store. I've had them for at least ten years. They're still pretty good. I figure as long as I'm not flexing them constantly, once they're glued in place, they'll be fine. Will the glue affect them? I don't know. I'm willing to give it a shot. So I've got those. I think they're a better fit. I'm not going to use my two little clear ones. Ooh, living on the edge. <clears throat> I also want some cool mesh inside. And I've got this fabric. It's 
fabric. <laughs> it's I think it's called twill or twool. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, come on, there we go. So you can kind of see it's quite a fine fabric mesh. And there's a piece here that I've previously dyed with just black paint to try and get rid of the red. So I'm going to cut some little circles out, stick it behind those, and it's just going to give texture. You know, if you were being hardcore, you could um, get in there and you could you know, cut these out, drill them out, and then put in a backing sort of speaker cone. You could cut out this area and you could build 3D depth and you know, have multiple layers. I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to cut into this for the tape decks. It's up to you. you know, that's the beauty of scratch building. It's up to you. So I'm going to cut out the mesh, stick these guys down on top of it, and show you how that looks. There we go. There's the mesh underneath my O-rings. None's poking out from the edges. So I'm going to glue those on with CA glue and then glue them in position on that. It's fun. I like this bit. Here we go. Speakers in place. Funky. Very funky. So now I want to uh, build the tape deck area in the middle here. So whenever I use styrene, I keep all my offcuts. Because you always need little bits of styrene of various sizes. You never know when it might be useful. That'll come in useful later. It's just, you know, it looks like a mess, but you can always find stuff in there. That is about what I'm looking for. It's nice and thin. That will do nicely. So that's going to be cut to size to be the tape decks in the middle there. And beneath it I'll put some little buttons to play slightly thicker, possibly made out of these. Yeah, that should work nicely. It's a bit tricky showing you white on white. Sorry, the camera's struggling a little tiny bit there. But, <clears throat> I reckon I will, it doesn't quite fit, although it will fit down the bottom. No, I'll cut them both the same size. So I'm going to cut that about there. There comes a piece off to nowhere. So will that fit between the speakers? Yes, it will. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit and put a couple of <coughs> um, button marks on it. Does that make sense? <laughs> You'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to freehand about, make it about half the width that it was. I want a piece this thin. It's probably better to just cut it straight through rather than try and score it and then bend it, just because it's too hard to get purchase on such a narrow little piece to bend at the end and snap. Yep, coolios. And I'm going to cut this piece to size to fit that. But first I'm going to just mark a couple of buttons on this. First, first first, I'm going to sand off that slightly dodgy edge. Alright, so I'm not going to cut all the way through. In fact, I might even use the back side of it for this. Yeah, that's better. So I'm using the blunt edge of the scalpel, not the blade. There'll be a bit of cleanup involved. It's kind of denty it in places. There, I doubt very much I'm going to be able to show you that with my camera, I think it'll struggle, yeah, bugger. but there are little tiny serrations in that now, oh yeah, alright, you can kind of see them there, and I'm just going to clean up that bit along the top, cut the other piece of size, and stick them on, cool, I reckon that's pretty convincing for the front, now to move on to the top, so I've got these slightly ugly seams that I want to try and hide a little bit, or at least distract from, so I have cut two pieces of styrene to shape. Let's get them on camera. And I'm just gonna plonk them on top and stick them down. So yeah, styrene is your friend. 100 percent styrene is your friend. Um, I have a whole bunch of different evergreen packets that I use. Stuff like these. 
let's stop zooming in. That's better. Yeah, stuff like this. And they are invaluable. So rod and tube is probably the one at the back there is probably the best one. You use it all the time. And just a whole range of these other sizes. They're just really helpful when it comes to stuff like this, you know. There is no way that I could trim focus. There's no way that I could trim a piece of styrene that thin, that straight. I just yeah, wouldn't work. So I'm gonna stick the small one at the front and the bigger one at the back so you get kind of a stepped up effect. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, I'm just gonna use the Tamiya extra thin, a couple of dots to hold it in place, and then once you're happy with the positioning, glob some more on to make it solid and secure. And you'll see I'm not worrying too much about getting styrene on the surface. This stuff is so thin that really, once you've painted, you can't see it. There we go. So there's our nice little step up. You can see it. Let me just turn the light off here. Is that better? Slightly. You can see the step, I hope. You can see my fingers. Alright, now... <sighs> Struggling! White! Why is white so hard? Okay, now for the fun part. I get to... Oh, let's maybe try this. <laughs> let's try dropping it. You get the idea. Um, now for the fun part, I get to start tricking it up with details. So little buttons and knobs on the top. Um, the boombox handle, and maybe even an antenna if I'm feeling extra tricky. Let's see. Now, it wouldn't be an 80s boombox if it didn't have a whole bunch of buttons and stuff on the top. So, I have cut from some rod, some little cylinders, and from a spare bit of sprue, some little switches. To give you an idea of size, that's how big they are. And it's time to stick them on top. So, you know, refer to your reference photos, get a feel for how it should look. I would recommend cut more than you need of these little guys because they don't all work out perfectly. Choose the ones that are the best and stick them down. I reckon those three were the best for the dials. Hope this is working. I think my camera is pretty much at the limits of its tolerance here for something so small. It shouldn't be so hard. Well, that's a little better. Come on. And then for the switches, I'm going to use two of them. And obviously, yeah, make sure everything's nice and straight. Make sure you don't stick down bits of hair. Mm, the white is not the best. Which is a pity, because that's what styrene comes as. Ah, oh, boy. This is rubbish. <laughs> no focus, no clarity, no camera holding. That's a little better. Alright. Okay, you can actually see some of the detail now. Sorry guys, shouldn't be this hard. So, I'm going to make a handle out of this piece, again from just the spares, cutoffs, box, and... Uh, Stick it in place, that's about the right size. So much of scrap build, scratch building is just, you know, does it look roughly correct? If so, stick with it. Alright, I'll make that one now too. Okay, so, our ghetto bluster handle is on. The last thing I've made 
is an aerial to go on the back. So I've made this out of very thin brass wire. So this is actually thin brass tubing, little tiny piece of brass wire fed into the tubing. Don't keep dropping it, and then a little bit of tubing again at the top. Um, it's very, very, very thin. Let's see if I can show you. There's no way my camera is going to be able to show you this, unfortunately, which is a bit of a bugger. Um, it was a real challenge to feed that wire into that tube, so you have to have good eyesight. Um, the wire itself is this Master Tools, blah blah blah, 20 centimeters. And I think the diameter I'm working with is like 0.7 of a millimeter, or it might even be one millimeter diameter. It's crazy. <coughs> so I am going to, uh, on the back here, I've stuck down just one little tiny square to hold the antenna in place. And I'm not sure it might be a bad idea sticking this on before I paint it. it might just fall off constantly, but I think I'm going to stick it on about there. That should do. So I'll dip the end in some super glue. And stick it on at the angle I want. There we go. It's already holding. Cool. So, I mean, if you wanted to get hardcore, you could detail the back, you could put vents and stuff in. Yeah, no one's going to see it on my use anyway. Um, you could also make an electric cord if you wanted to. But, for what I need for this to appear in a shop window, it's done. So now it's time to paint. So I'm going to basically airbrush it with some primer because there's so many different medias involved, particularly media, medias, media, and um, particularly these rubber o-rings, I really want to make sure they've got a good primer before I start painting. I'm going to do that now. It'll be even whiter. So because it's meant to be a TV repair shop and a radio repair shop, I thought I'd better make a couple of TVs as well. So very similar techniques, made out of offcuts, Ooh. Hey. Uh, a little bit of detail at the back. That one's the least staple of them all. A bit of detail on the back of that one. An old sort of 90s TV here, quite chunky. And a tape dispenser using the little round bits that I cut out for the speakers from the clear tube. That'll work. <coughs> Stability might be an issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alright, so yes, I'm going to prime these now. Fun. One other useful material is this blue modelling foam that you can get. Um, it's a great way to build up bulk rather than building the structure out of styrene like I did on the Ghetto Blaster. So, for example, I want to build this funky old transistor radio thing here. And I think it's a stereo tuner. Not sure. So, I've just cut them out of blue foam, little tiny circle of rod for the tuner, put that bit there, and for the radio, a piece of blue foam with some styrene detail added, and that's going to go together to make that. It's pretty easy. And here's the end result. So, with a little bit of careful painting, this is what we've got. And I'm happy with that. Um, I will show you, I'll get it in focus, and I'll show you a reference here of the exact Ghetto Blaster that I was copying. And yeah, I think it's fairly, fairly close to representative of that. So really, you know, it's... It's not hard. The sky's the limit. You can make pretty much any appliances. Certainly boxy ones. I mean, things like... I'll show you one that I tried to make a while back. Hang on a second. Focus.
Focus. So this was an attempt to make a kitchen mixer. And it's crap. <laughs> I won't deny. It's a bit shit. Um, so, not everything works. But certainly, for things like these boxy guys, all these boxy things here, it's a really, really easy technique. And, you know, the only thing that limits you is your imagination and whatever offcuts you have of styrene and foam. Um, and, yeah, just, you know, enjoy it. It's fun. Um, I hope this is helpful. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, maybe maybe you build dollhouses. Maybe you want to make, make a modern diorama, military diorama. Whatever it is, get stuck in and make them because it's not hard. All right. I'll catch you next time. Any questions, any questions, please ask below, but otherwise, I'll catch you next time on Dave's Model Workshop. See ya.